today's video, we're looking at lighting modifiers. I've taken 17 different modifiers and I've done the same portrait 17 times. And we're going to look at the results and then try and work out which modifier is best for you. I'm going to pop links in the description to things that are similar to what I'm using at the moment. A lot of it you can't buy anymore because it's just, it's just old. Some of it's like 10 years old, 20 years old. But anything that I can find which is similar or the exact same item, I'll pop in the description so you can easily find it. Now, when it comes to lighting modifiers, there's a whole range of different options out there. We have Octobanks, Octoboxes, Softboxes, Indirect Softboxes umbrellas we sort of have the softbox umbrellas the indirect umbrellas with the diffusion panels on them the list goes on and on so it's quite difficult to find out exactly what you need and they all have particular claims of things they can do well and things they can't do well so today i've taken the same portrait of my friend john i have popped a link to his website in the description and his instagram because he's also a very good photographer and i've just tried to keep everything as similar as possible so we had the light roughly at the same place i metered every single shot at f9 but I shot it at f8 because my light meter and camera have some sort of disagreement at the moment. And they were trying to angle it pretty much as similarly as possible. So they are, for all intents and purposes, the same shot. I've just exported the raw file as a JPEG. I've not done anything to it. It's just gone straight out and I popped it back into Lightroom with the file name as to what it is. So during the setup, we had a black reflector or a black flag on one side, and then we had the light coming at 45 degrees from above, which is quite a common sort of portrait setup. And we had Jono sat on a stall nice and still with a white background. The background is white. I've not done anything to the white balance. I've kept it set as a standard white balance throughout. So any shifts in color are created by the modifier or the degree of fall off of light. So let's jump onto the iMac. We're going to have a look at these images. and I'm going to talk you through each shot, exactly what I see, how I feel the modifier would be good, and also how I think you could use it or whether you should use it at all. A lot of the modifiers I have, they do such a slightly different job to the next one that for most of us, we just don't need it. Unless you've got a warehouse like I have to store all this junk in, it's not worth having. So let's dive in. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom with the 17 different modifiers. I've sort of labeled them as what I would call the images. Now, I've shot this with my Canon 5DS and I've used the 100mm F2 Carl Zeiss Ma uh, Milvus Macro, I think it's called. It's a manual focus lens. Pretty sure I missed the focus on a few of these, but there we go. So this is the range of shots, there's 17 shots here. And we can see, for the most part, they're very similar. There's the odd one like this guy over here, which is completely different. But apart from that, there's not a great deal of difference at this distance. So I'm gonna jump into each shot, talk about the shot, and then at the end, I'm going to go and give a bit of comparisons as to where we can sort of, you know, make some differences. So I've gone to, I've not used Lightroom for a long time, so you have to bear with me. I've uh, I've made the transition over to Capture One, but Lightroom is still quite good for these sorts of videos. So here we go. First of all, we have the I put eight foot indirect octobank. I think it's about eight foot. So we'll have to double check. This is I don't think you can buy this particular one anymore. It was made by Bowens, um, but it's this huge indirect octobank. What indirect means is that the light shoots into the modifier and then comes back out again rather than shooting through the modifier. It's a particularly good way to create nice light. Now, this is a massive softbox or octobank. So it's a soft light source, but it has no scrim and it has a very specular inside. So it's a specular but soft light source. It is designed for portraits. We can see it's picking up a nice amount of detail in the skin. These have had no sharpening applied to them at all. The fall off is not too drastic considering the distance of the light. I think it gives a nice amount of detail. I mean, at the moment, this is just the benchmark shot. I think it looks nice. I must say that converting a raw file straight to JPEG is an awful way to do things. Um, but I didn't really want to mess with the files because I thought this would give a truer picture. But there we go, here's our starting point. You can see the background is lighter on this side, my left and darker on my right. But apart from that, it's a pretty nice modifier. Now it is huge, it is cumbersome. You need a tripod with wheels to move it around, which is very, you know, at least a medium heavy duty stand. And you probably need a massive room to use this in. But there we go, that's the first one where we started at. So next up is my medium softbox. This is a 110 centimeter softbox from Bowens. This is the first softbox I ever purchased. I've had it for over a decade from new. It cost me about 110 pounds. And at the time, I thought that was extortionate. Little did I know, a few years later, I'd be spending a lot more. Now this is my go-to food modifier. You see from the catch lights in the eyes here, which are rectangular, it looks like a window. That's perfect for food, especially your tomatoes and that sort of thing. 
it does a great job. Now, there's a lot of people out there who get really fascinated by catch lights to the point where apparently some people retouch the catch lights until they are the optimal shape. I think once you've got to that point there, unless you're Annie Leibovitz and your pictures are bang on, you're just clutching at straws. But here we go. So here's the next one. This is the medium softbox. I like this look. This for me, softboxes particularly for me work really well because I like window light. I like natural light. So I'm quite happy with this. It's soft. It's contrasty still, and it picks out enough detail. So we next go on to the small softbox. Now, if we look at the difference between the two of these, what I'm specifically going to do is zoom in on the skin here. You can see from the cheek how as the light gets smaller and a bit harder, we start to get a little bit more clipping, which is where it gets a bit too bright. So this is my small softbox. We use this for food and product work. I have three of them all identical. They're quite useful for... Anything which isn't highly reflective. It doesn't work on a highly reflective item because you can't get those perfectly straight lines like you can from the metal softbox, which is not called a softbox, just a metal box. Um, but for a softbox, this is great. I picked them up off eBay. I got three of them for £50. It was a bargain. Now, this is my favourite portrait modifier at the moment. This is my massive 198 centimetre softbox. Now, if we zoom in on this image and look at the skin, it is incredibly soft. It is incredibly evenly lit. And if we just skip back to the smaller softbox, now these are made by the same brand and they're the same line of softbox as well. It's not like a, a premium and a budget model. So we can really see the difference here. And I just think the skin tones in this one here with the soft Octobox are so much better. I think if you want soft light, this is great. However, it's nearly two meters big. I had to stand inside it to build it. It is not practical. It's that massive one which hangs on the ceiling in my studio most of the time. Um, well, that's currently on the floor and I can't get it back up there because I need someone to come and help me. If you want to come and help me put it back up, do let me know. Okay, now we've gone to no modifying. This is where we really see the difference. So this here is just a Bowen's head with nothing. It is hard. The shadow has no real fall off. It just goes straight from shadow to highlight. It's pretty brutal. Now I have used this in portraits in the past for effect and it can work really well if you want some hard light, you know, you're going for that sort of fashion look. But in this particular context, it's not great. And if we just skip back to the big softbox, we look at the shadows here, how they gradually, it's the uh, umbra and penumbra stage of the shadows. Go on Wikipedia, it's useful to know this stuff. I'll put a link in the description to the wiki page actually. It's one of those things that you don't know exists and once you know it exists, it really helps you understand lighting. You can see here the difference between really soft and really hard light. Neither is better than the other, they're just different. Now we've gone from no modifier to a wide reflector. The wide reflector bangs out a lot more light. It sort of amplifies the light and it's specular as well. So if we zoom in on the skin here, you see these really bright, crisp areas of skin. That's created by the specular light. Now, there's only really four qualities of light worth noting. You have hard light and soft light, diffuse light, and specular light. So the big octobank at the start was soft because it's big, and it was specular because it has that crispy metallic look on the inside. The big soft box is soft because it's big, but it's diffused because it has, I think it's got three baffles inside, which are the white bits of fabric. This here is hard because it's small and it's specular. And obviously this is a sliding scale. It doesn't, things don't just stop being specular and become diffuse. There's a, there's a gradient to this. And now we add the seven inch reflector. Now this is not as specular. It's a, it's a slightly different metal on the inside. And it also focuses the light a bit. So if we just pull out from the shot here, if we go back, wide reflector, light goes everywhere. Seven inch reflector, you can see now I've slightly angled it on this side here. So it's quite bright over here. And then it gets quite dark over here. It focuses the light a bit like a snoot, but it's not a snoot. I don't really use snoots for much. They're a bit of a, a 1980s photography job. So this here is called the Bowen Sun Bounce. I'll pop a link to this because it's a really good modifier if you want to create sunlight. It does a very good job of it at a very affordable price. A similar item from Bron Color would be in the thousands. This is in the hundreds. And it has a white interior. It's a bit like a beauty dish, but without the center. It's basically like a giant spill kill, but it creates sunlight or light which looks like sunlight. I use it a lot for when I'm shooting drinks and glasses, but it's also good for fashion work. And you can see here how if we go from spill kill and then jump across to the sun bounce, slightly softer, there's a little bit more gradation in the light and the quality of light 
is less specular, but it still has a bit of pop to it. So that's quite a nice, a nice modified for portrait work. It'd be especially good for fashion. So now we have the small beauty dish. Now this beast here ate up power compared to the sun bounce. And if you just go, so the beauty dish has a like a circular dome in the center, which the light bounces back in towards the bulb and then wraps around the circular dish. So Sun bounce, beauty dish. And this beauty dish here is silver on the inside. It's not a high, crisp, specular silver, but it is a silver. And then we're gonna go for my large beauty dish, which is white on the inside. And you can see the difference in the skin here. Now, I personally think if you want a beauty dish, go for one of these larger ones. If not, go for a spill kilt or a sun bounce. But this here is particularly nice light. It'd be great for portraits, for fashion, for headshots. It's a very versatile, portrait modifier but it is a portrait modifier it's not much use for anything else now this is a lantern now whoever sent me this thank you because that I, I got it sent to me in the post and i don't have a note a brand name or anything it just has my address so some lovely soul sent me this lantern thing i would never have bought it in a million years because it looks like a gimmicky product um i'm probably going to link to a brand who didn't send me it which is embarrassing but there we go but it's actually really nice light for portraits and I think if you're doing anything where you need to light a big scene, it's good as well. It's a lot like the lanterns on film sets. So if you're looking for that particular aesthetic, this is great. And it's an umbrella, so it packs down small and you just hang it off a light. It's really good. I'll pop a link to that in the description if I can find one. So this is the white shoot through direct umbrella. These are the £2.50 Amazon, you know, I've just started photography. When I started doing headshots, this was my go-to modifier with a speed light, a Canon 580X2, Pocket Wizard and one of these. And they are great. I've overpowered this umbrella a little bit because of the setup we had. It doesn't work. It, there's a lot. I'm going to go into a lot more detail in each modifier in individual videos. Uh, this is more of an overview, but I've cooked it on this umbrella. It stopped doing its job. It shouldn't have such a specular look to the skin. I've just completely saturated it with light. Um, but these are brilliant. If you need a portrait modifier for soft light and you're in a tight space or you need to be able to travel, the white shoot through direct umbrella is God. Now this is just flipping it around so now it's indirect. So if you come here, you can see now it's doing more the job I expected it to do the first time. I actually prefer it direct with less power, but this shows you what the skin tones could be looking like. So shooting through the umbrella, bouncing off the umbrella. And I think that's a beautiful skin tone. I don't think it's as nice as the two meter large Bowen softbox, but I don't think you're gonna get a two meter large Bowen softbox into most places. The large white umbrella, indirect. This is like an opaque sort of pearl lacquer on the inside. Um, it is utterly awful. I think it costs £110. You can see the skin's clipping. It's soft, but it's not soft. It's specular, but it's not. It's just, it's money that I'm never going to see again, basically. I bought it thinking, oh, that would be brilliant. It wasn't. It was useless. And it's pretty much just lived in my studio ever since. And I don't really use it apart from... For this particular video so maybe 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 if enough of you buy from an affiliate link i will make my money back on that horrendous modifier i'm not going to link to that one because you don't need it now this is the large umbrella and the diffuser these are very trendy at the moment so what these are is a black backed umbrella with either a silver or white interior pro photo makes some brilliant ones this is a cheap one off uh, amazon i'll send you a link to that because it's actually pretty good and then you pop this diffusion sock over it i'm going to compare this one to the large softbox so the difference between a large umbrella and a large softbox is a lot of it comes down to spill. As you can see with the large umbrella, we're getting a lot of light on the background. With the softbox, it's much more controlled. As we zoom into the skin, you can see the difference. There's a slight difference in white balance that'll be to do with the actual uh, color of the material. But both of them have very soft skin. You have to try and look past the actual white balance here. What I probably should have done is shot a color chart with everything, but. Time is a valuable asset and I'm not rich in it right now. I would say that the large umbrella is nearly as good as the large softbox in this particular example. Now, the large softbox is much more expensive. I think if you bought a large pro photo umbrella, it would be better than the large softbox. And if you don't have a warehouse to throw your junk in like I do, then that's probably a good way to go with a large umbrella. And then going from the large umbrella to a small umbrella. And the big difference here is if you watch the background, we're getting far less spill from this one, the large one, to this one, the small one. I love this small umbrella. I think it gives really punchy light. It's not parabolic, but it's very deep. So this is a deep interfit umbrella with a diffusion sock on the front of it. I'm sure it was less than 150 pounds. 
When I finished shooting with the Shoot Through Umbrellas and I fancied a different look for a bit, this is what I went for. It was quite trendy at the time. Annie Leibovitz had them, Clay Cook had them. A lot, a lot of, you know, trendy portrait photographers are using this particular modifier. So I jumped on that bandwagon, as we all do. And I liked it. I really enjoyed it. So this is a great modifier. Fits in the front pouch, my laptop pouch of a Think Tank roller case. So quick run and gun shooting. This is brilliant. When I was shooting weddings, this would have come out as well. It's great on location. It's great for picking out your subject in a busy crowd. Brilliant modifier. And to finish it all off, we have this seven inch reflector with a 10 degree grid. And I love this modifier and I use it in a particular way. And I'm gonna do a video on this about how I use it to create, it's used in conjunction with a large umbrella with this sat on the inside. It's a bit complicated to explain, but you can produce some beautiful portrait lighting. I'm gonna try and produce like a, a bit more of an elaborate video like this one once a week, probably releasing it on a Friday until I do a Google and realize that Friday is the worst day to release big content. But this is a great modifier to have. One of the things you should definitely buy are spill kills and grids. This is not used in its correct way, but you can see how well it's focused the light, dropped the darkness of the background completely down, really focused, it's really crisp. I mean, it would have been crisp if I'd focused the camera properly, but the joys of manual focus lenses. Got the beard in focus, that's the most important bit. But this is just such a big difference. I mean, even from just using the reflector by itself at the start, this grid just almost turns the background to black. If I'd have angled it a bit better, moved them a bit further away, we would have had the black background from white paper. I think the big take home here is, although there's hundreds and hundreds of different modifiers out there, there's only four qualities of light, soft, hard, specular, and diffuse. I'm gonna go into a lot more detail in every modifier in future videos. This is a bit of an overview to help you decide which look you're going for. So if you're thinking, I've got an umbrella, but do I need an Octobox? If you have the money, buy it. If you're thinking, I don't really have another 200 pounds, whatever it may be, don't worry about it. It doesn't make that much difference. The other thing is only photographers really care about most of this. A lot of the time, just use what you've got. I still use cheap umbrellas. I shot a very big ad campaign where my courier didn't turn up and the courier had all of the Broncola rental kit in it, really expensive gear. And all I had was my 5D Mark II, an 85 millimeter 1.8 and a speed light in my bag that I had just for carrying around for behind the scenes stuff. None of the actual gear turned up for the shoot. I ran to the nearest camera shop when I was in London. I bought a light stand, some triggers, and some like five pound shoot through umbrella and I shot it all on that. Nobody questioned it. Nobody said a word and I got booked again. They don't know. They've seen your portfolio, they've seen your work and they know that they like it. They don't care how you achieve it. And I was really anxious going in there because of that. I think I went in super confident and just went, this is what I do. I've got one speed light, one umbrella, a lens and a camera. Let's do this. I was lucky I had my laptop and a tether cable with me. Otherwise I would have probably given the game up. But that's how I got through it. Going forward, I'm going to try and put out a bigger video once a week as well as daily content. So some of the daily content can be a lot shorter so I can focus more on doing bigger videos like this. If there's anything you want me to compare, anything you want me to show you, do let me know in the comments. I hope these videos have used to you and I'll see you all next time.